Okay, so let's begin right away. Today we have bone terminology or just what a bone is made of. The first part will be about compact bone or dense bone and the cancellous or spongy bone. So first we have the compact bone right here. So compact or dense bone is basically just that outer shell, that hard layer that actually creates the outside of most bones. And it's the main part of long bones. So this is the part that is the compact bone. So basically, again, just the outer shell or the exterior of most bones. And it actually takes up almost up to 80% of the entire skeleton mass. And the rest is spongy or cancellous bone. So basically, all it is is the outer shell of the bone. And this is the histological picture of the compact bone. And if you want video on histology, which is micro or cell anatomy, please comment down below. Okay, so next up is the cancellous bone, which is basically just bone type that is made of like sinuses or even pores so you can call it spongy or porous bone and those spaces are mostly or usually filled with bone marrow so this is the spongy bone as we already discussed it's between two slabs of compact bone and the example where you can fi find the spongy bone is in flat bones, so they can be in the skull, like parietal or frontal bones, and in short bones, so it could be carpal and tarsal bones in the limbs. And this is how it looks up close in reality. So you talked about the basic parts of the bone, now we have some more, so we'll talk about the medullar cavity. Epiphysis, diathesis, metathesis, epiphyseal cartilage or disc, articular cartilage, erysteum, and endosteum. With some extra info, so be sure to stay and listen to the rest of the lecture and even subscribe if you want that extra. Mary cavity or the marrow cavity. It's just a space that is surrounded by the outer shell or the cortex of the bone, and it's found in long bones. So all it is is just a space for marrow to be collected in and to be safe. And actually, in the young animals, these spaces, those cavities, are filled with red marrow, and when the animal ages, it actually gets replaced by yellow marrow or just fat. So red marrow fine in young animals and yellow marrow is found with age. Now we're going to talk about all the physis, epi, dia and meta. I feel like I'm in a Harry Potter movie saying these terms out loud, but that's okay. So first up we have the epiphysis which basically just means uh, both ends or either end of the bone. And the closest one to the body is the proximal epiphysis, and the one that's distant from the rest of the body is the distal epiphysis. And this is the ends of the long bone, because long bone actually has ends. Next up is the diathesis which is just like a cylindrical shaft, which is like the middle or the body of the actual bone and is between both the epiphysis. And metathesis of a mature bone is the part that connects the epiphysis to the diathesis. So think of it as like a bridge or like a neck that connects the body, which is diathesis, to both ends or the epiphysis. I'm going to talk cartilage. So first up we have the epithelial cartilage or disc. 
So this is a layer of hyaline cartilage, which is a type of it. And we can talk about that in the future if we do a lecture on histology. So definitely comment down below if you want one. And this cartilage is within the metathesis of an immature bone. And as you already know, metathesis is like a bridge or the neck of the bone, which connects the diathesis to the epithesis or separates it. And this is the most important part. This cartilage is the only area in which the bone can actually lengthen. So this is the reason why it's only in an immature bone, because as the body matures, it can no longer grow, right? I mean, we don't grow to like four or five meters for our life and animals also don't grow their entire lives. So again, this is the only area in which a bone can become longer. So this is the area. And it's also right here, here and here. And we have the articular cartilage, which is also made of hyaline cartilage. And it's connected to the actual joint. So it covers the area where the joint is created. So all of this here, that gray part, and right here is the articular cartilage. So it's like a fibrous membrane that is found of the surface or outside of the bone, but it's not present where we have cartilage, especially articular cartilage. And if you want to know more, definitely subscribe and comment down below for the lecture set you want to see. Okay, I'm waiting. Oh, I'm waiting. Okay, let's go. So, in this, you have osteoblast cells that are responsible for the actual production of the bone. And in the peristuum, they're responsible for the actual increase of the diameter of the bone. And the activity of these cells are very important for healing the fractures or breaks of the bone. Because if we break something, we definitely want it to heal, right? So this is the peristuum, this is where it is. So the surface of the bone, but here we have the articular cartilage. So don't mix these up. Not all bone is, co is covered in one thing. And the actual cells are right here. So as you can see, you have two layers. You have the fibrous layer, which is made of fiber basically, and you have the cells. So two beautiful layers and both are very important. And the peristuum is vascular and actually were well innervated, which means that you can feel if something scratches against the bone, which hopefully nobody does, but you can feel because of nerves that are inside of it. And the end of stuum to the end of our beautiful and very interesting lecture. So it's another membrane, but instead of being on the outside, it's what lines the inside of the marrow cavity. So endo, which is the beginning of this word, means inside. So, as already mentioned, it's the thing that lines the marrow cavity and actually the external canals, which are just the canals inside the bone. So this is where it is. So this is the cavity and this is the endosturm. And some extra info as well. So the erosion, actual erosion of the existing bone is done by osteoclasts, which are another type of cell in the bones, but instead of creating new cells, these are the cells that actually eat up the bone that is no longer useful. And 
this is the thing or the cells that determine the size of the marrow cavity and the actual thickness of the middle or the diaphysal cortex. So let's say something is not going right and the osteoclasts are too good at their job, let's say. So the bones can become very fragile if the middle of the bone, that outside cortex is not thick enough. But if it's too thick, let's say osteoclasts are not doing their job properly, then we don't have enough space for the marrow. So everything needs to be good and working in order to actually keep the bones in their best possible shape. And both the peristome and endostome contain both type of cells. And again, if you want a video on histology, because this is part of histology, definitely say that down below in the comments. And this is a bone cell, which we can talk about if you want to. Certainly not the least, we have the literature and other sources. Everything will be linked down below. So thank you for watching. And I hope that we will learn some more another day. Bye-bye.